Now, our church people have heard me preach this. Some of you online maybe have not. But from the beginning of the year, I preached it almost as though the Lord was saying, I'm commending you for overcoming. Understand that I feel now like what Jesus was saying was he was prophesying to us. And he was saying, listen, you're going to face some things and you're going to overcome. I'm putting a white stone in your hand as a prophetic word over your life that is declaring no matter what you face, you are going to overcome. No matter what the president faces, he's going to overcome for the sake of the nation. I'm putting a white stone in the hand of his advisors because I'm going to supernaturally give them revelation from on high. I'm going to supernaturally begin to speak to them, speak to him, and there's going to be victory on the other side. So can we lay hold of a white stone in the spirit today and understand that Jesus has already prophesied over us. He's already made declarations over us. And he's already said, listen, if you'll line yourself up with me, you'll be an overcomer. Come on, we need to be encouraged by this. Some of you are facing, I know we've got business people in our church that are facing one of the greatest shakings they've ever been through with their businesses. I know some people have, are going through some of the greatest shaking in your family. But I am telling you, Jesus is putting a white stone in your hand and he's declaring, listen, if you'll line your faith up with me, you will overcome. Come on, guys, we love victory. We love watching Sports. Why? Because there's a victor that prevails. Praying it's the, the Cowboys this fall. Okay, but, you know, what, what can you say, okay? We love, watching, <laughs> we love watching movies that show the underdog having a turnaround. Come on, remember the word right now is we're going from crisis to comeback. We love watching the, the movies where there's great comebacks, where people succeed against incredible odds. As a matter of fact, my husband usually cries through those. I'm going to tell you, he's a softy. And, he usually, and I look over at him, I say, are you crying? Really? That's a Kleenex commercial, okay? Uh, no. <laughs> he's a softy. But come on, we love victory. We love overcoming. And so I want to read you this scripture out of 1 John chapter 5. And I want this to really be sealed in your heart for this season of time. It says this, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Let me ask you something. What's born of God in you? What did God speak to you in the light that you're now struggling to believe in the dark. What did God say to you? Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the son of God. So I'm going to give you just a couple of things that I believe God is saying to us during this season that we're moving from crisis to comeback that I believe is going to help us in this time of reset to get us ready for a new beginning. Every time we're taking communion, you know what? When Jesus took communion with his people, you know what he was signifying? He was signifying, I'm getting ready to reset things. I'm getting ready to take you out of an old covenant into a new covenant. I'm bringing you into a new beginning. Come on, this is powerful. Every time we take communion, Jesus is saying, I'm bringing you into the new. And we're covenanting ourselves because how many know that when God says, I'm doing a new thing, all of us kind of make our little list or get our little vision about what the new thing's going to look like. <laughs> and then how many have found in your Christian walk experience that it doesn't always look like what you thought it was going to look like? Can we give God permission to be God? Can we give God permission to begin to cause things to unfold, to reset us for our new beginning? And to, because I believe it's going to mean a time of tremendous victory. So number one, we've got to reset our attitude and put our faith in God. Reset your attitude and put your faith in God. Look at this. John 16, says this. These things... I have spoken to you 
that in me you might have peace. Lift your hands up and just receive peace. Come on, some of you are trying to figure it all out. You're not going to figure it out. Jesus is saying, I'm speaking to you so that you might have peace. In the world, what does this say? In the world, you may possibly have tribulation. No, actually, what it actually says is you will have tribulation. <laughs> but be of good cheer. Hang on. There's good news. Be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Listen to it in the Passion Translation. It says, and everything I've taught you is so that the peace which is in me will be in you. Come on, put your hand on your belly. The peace that's in Christ is now in you. And it will give you great confidence as you rest in this unbelieving world. You will experience trouble and sorrows. Say, Pastor Jane, that doesn't sound like a good faith message. But is it reality? Jesus was preaching to us, not some pie-in-the-sky dream world where nothing ever goes wrong. Jesus was saying, listen, you're going to have troubles, you're going to have sorrows, but you must be courageous, for I have conquered the world. Come on. Jesus looked down through the ages, and I believe Jesus looked down through this year, putting a white stone in our hand, saying, listen, there's going to be some trouble, there's going to be some sorrows, there's going to be some things you've not counted on, but be of good courage, I have overcome the world. we got to reset our thinking. So when something bad happens, when something difficult happens, when we're facing insurmountable uh, odds or difficulties, what we have to allow to begin to resonate inside of us is Jesus already saw this and Jesus already overcame this. And because Jesus already overcame, I am an overcomer. We cannot live in defeat. Come on, we got to shake ourselves free from defeatist mentality and recognize I'm an overcomer because Jesus has overcome. Be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So when bad things happen, tell yourself, Jesus has already overcome this. If things don't happen the way you expect them to, our, to, our, our go-to attitude should be, Jesus has already overcome this. When you get disappointed, you need to think, Jesus has already overcome this. And because Jesus has overcome, I am overcoming. we got to give our attitude a reset. I, w listen, I, 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 I fell in love with a book years ago. It's by John Maxwell. It's called The Winning Attitude. How many have ever read The, the Winning Attitude? And after I read this book, I, I, I started to read it on an airplane and uh, when I read a, a paper book, it's one of the things about electronic books, it's harder to highlight things. But um, I was reading it on an airplane. I had a, a, a yellow highlight pen in my hand. And I had to put the pen down because it sort of loses um, the emphasis when you highlight every word on every page. Okay? And it's really about how be as believers we need to develop a winning attitude or a winning perspective in life. And it's full of scriptures. It's full of examples. And for a little bit of time, I just bought a case of books. And everybody that came into me for counsel, I would listen and say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, read this book. Okay? So if some of you are struggling right now to, to have a real positive outlook on life, Get the winning attitude, start reading it. The word of God in there will just wash your mind and reset you for the things that are coming ahead. How many know we all need to go through a reset? You go through discouraging times, guess what? You have to purpose and make a choice to reset. As a matter of fact, let me give you a couple of quotes. They're not on the screen, but let me just give this to you. Uh, Sidlo Baxter said this. He said, what is the difference between an obstacle and an opportunity? It is our attitude towards it. Every opportunity, somebody needs to hear this this morning, every opportunity has difficulty. And every difficulty has an opportunity. Remember we talked about the word crisis formed from two different Chinese characters, one that means danger, one that means opportunity. Opportunity. 